You're saying that it's something from nothing. Whereas no, I'm not saying Christians from nothing. It's from nothing, yeah. I didn't say that. So it's always, it's always been there. Then. I said the Creator created this creation. But I believe this creation, I'm talking about this creation, was created by something prior to, from it. Because we believe before it, because we believe Allah is the, is the creator. I mean Allah always creates, okay? We don't believe this is the first creation, by the way. You know, because Allah has no beginning or end. So we believe this creation came from another creation. Does that not, if, if Allah was there before this creation, does that not mean that, if Allah, that Allah is this creation? Because like, this is, like, how can, how can you have like, if, if, you've got, if you've got like an empty, like, let's just say there's nothing, yeah? yeah. But, there's not nothing because Allah's, you're saying that Allah's always been there. Yeah? Yes, it has no beginning. So, so how can you say that this hasn't always been there? You know I, mean? I didn't say always this way. I said this was created. So this is a creation. Yeah. So of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, Allah created this creation. Uh, like, just example, me, if I create this book, I don't have to be this book. This book is outside me. So you, you with me. Yeah. But the first thing that we have to stick with, that we have to accept that we are here for a purpose. Do you, you accept that? Yeah. Okay. Now, there's another way we can accept, show that there is a creator, okay, from the prophets and messengers. Like, I don't have to speak about Jesus, Moses, I only speak about Prophet Muhammad. Because if I establish with a logical argument, with the tangible proofs that Prophet Muhammad is a true prophet, logic dictate we should believe what he came with. Do you accept with that? Okay. Because why? Because, because why? Because the Most High will not choose a liar to convey the message. You with me? So now, now you accept there's a creator, there's a purpose, okay. Now, what is our purpose of life? Person must say, I'm here just to spend my life. Person must say, I'm here to kill everyone. Person must say, I'm here to smoke drugs, okay. So when you reflect upon the creation of the creator, you come to know that the creator is the most wise. Logic dictates, the most wise will not leave us without clarifying the truth to us. Do you agree with that? Yeah. It makes sense? That's a uh, framework. Now, how the Creator did it? By choosing. Sorry, uh, I'm not. Uh, I'll give you my back. Forgive me. I'm talking to both of you. If you wanna That's listen, fine, fine. Okay, you have to go. Yeah. Okay. Can I give you a gift? Maybe next time. Yeah. Can I, uh, let me give you a gift. All right. Thank you. It's not talking about my. Let me check. Maybe there's money in there. You know. Yeah. It was nice talking to you. Me too. All right. Take care. Yeah? Sorry. So now, we. I like it. What's your name, by the way? Will, my name is Shamsi. Nice to meet you. So now the Creator, how he did it? By choosing people amongst us to tell us about our purpose of life. But again, the Creator knows some people are going to lie. They're going to claim to be a prophet of his, but they are liars. So what the Creator did, when he sent prophets and messengers, he sent them with a clear criteria for you and I to distinguish between a true prophet and a false prophet. So Prophet Muhammad, for example, he came with prophecies. Let me ask you, who knows the future in details? Future in detail. Uh, the creator, the one who made it. Except the creator. Because why? If I'm going to make a phone, I have to have the full knowledge how to make a phone in detail. So no one will have the knowledge of the phone in detail like me. Except if someone learned from me. Okay? Because I made it from scratch. So the creator who made this creation, he knows about this creation in details. Okay? Now Prophet Muhammad, when God sent him, he sent him with the prophecies. That's one. Prophet Muhammad said it's going to come a time. Listen to his prophecy. It's going to come a time when a man will make up a lie. Man will make up a lie. In the morning, before the sun rises, before the, before the sun rises, okay? Or when the, uh, the day break, and before the sun rises, his lies will reach the east and the west. Basically, in a few hours, this person, his lies, will reach the east and the west. Prophet Muhammad lived 1,400 years ago, alayhi salatu salam. Back in those days, in order for me to travel from London to Cardiff, it takes me three days, let alone for my lie to spread far east, far west. Now, make up a lie, put in Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook, will reach the east and the west. So he's predicting the future. How he knew that? Another one, I'll give you another one to, to, to show you that we as the Muslims, we don't believe Islam is the truth because one day I saw Prophet Muhammad in my dream. No, we believe Islam is the truth because we have logical proofs and tangible proofs that we can share with everyone. Okay? Brother, can you take, go side bit because 
You know, uh, Afri. Yeah, so come side, please. Go. Take him there. Because you know, the smoking is coming. Yeah, please. Thank you very much. So, so, so the point here, another prophecy. Prophet Muhammad said, will come a time when you see the barefoot Arab man. Barefooted Arab man. They will start competing in building tall buildings. Building tall buildings. Building tall buildings, yeah? When the Prophet Muhammad mentioned that, the Arabs were not known to build tall buildings. Those who were known, the Persians, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Greeks, okay? Now, let me ask you if you know, where is the tallest building in the world? Burj Khalifa, right? Burj Khalifa bro, is in Dubai. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dubai, 50 years ago, was a pure desert. Let alone 1,400 years ago at the time Prophet Muhammad So how he knew that? You know what I'm saying? I'll give you another one. That also from the, the criteria of a true prophet, he must be known amongst his nation to be trustworthy, truthful, and honest. Why? Because if he's a liar, the people will reject him. Prophet Muhammad was known to be trustworthy, truthful, and honest. Okay? Likewise, he comes with the same teachings. Prophet Muhammad came with the same teaching of Moses, Jesus, Abraham, Jacob. All of them worship one God and stay away from the false God and follow the prophet that came to you. You know, because you already believe in God, you believe there's a creator, then should you not be grateful to him? You should, of course. I always mention this example. I always mention to his brother here, okay? If you are in a house and there's a fire, you are surrounded by fire, you're about to die, you gave up, that's it. I came and I saved your life. What would you say to me? Thank you. You're gonna remember me all the time, innit? Yeah, yeah. I saved your life, bro. Yeah. You're about to finish, yeah. you know? You will not forget. Yeah. Okay, you, you're gonna be grateful to me. Yeah. And you're gonna remember me all the time. So why don't you be grateful and remember the Creator who gave you life for free? Yeah. See? see? Yeah. Now, that's the first part. The second part, how can I be grateful and worship the Creator? Let me ask you this question. If you wanna buy a gift, for your mother, would you buy a gift that you love or your mother love? That she, loves. she loves. Likewise, if you want to be grateful and worship the Creator, we should worship Him the way He loves, not the way we love. Because the way He loves is objective. The way we love is subjective. That's why the Creator sent the prophets and messengers. Moses, Abraham, Noah, Jacob, the last of them is the Prophet Muhammad. So He came to teach us how to worship the Creator. You uh, 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 know the Quran. Likewise, he came with the miracles. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu came with a book which had been memorized by 100 million of people, word for word, letter by letter, for letter, letter for letter. The size of the Quran. Brother, brother, I'm speaking, you keep speaking over me. Barakallahu Shukran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so now, the letter for letter, word for word. There is no book upon the face of the earth. It has been memorized by hundred million of people except the Quran, the holy book. You have Muslim children, <coughs> memorize it word for word. Guess what? Allah mentioned that in the Quran 1,400 years ago. That this book, وَلَقَدْ يَسَّنَّ الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ فَهَلْ مِنْ مُذَّكِرِ We have made this Quran easy to be memorized. And this statement cannot be a statement of someone who's just a normal human being. It must be a statement of the creator of the human beings. Is it, does it make sense what I said to you? Sense, Is yeah. it clear what I said to you? How, well, how, um, with, like, with, how could you verify that it's never been changed? How is it possible to verify it? Okay. Because no one's been alive 1400 years. Okay, that's, that's, that's a good point. Now, first of all, we have to understand if there is, we accept there is God, okay? Now we establish God must, can we move aside if you don't mind? Yeah, because people are shouting. I know, I'll come with the shouting guy. Thank you very much. I'm having a very nice discussion with you. You're a very smart person. Okay, the guys are shouting here. Just be here. So you ask good questions. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, you ask good question. How do you know he has not been changed? Okay. Firstly, we establish there is God. Okay, there's a creator. Secondly, we establish the creator is the most wise. Thirdly, we said the most wise will not create the creation without, without giving us framework. That's your word. Creator must preserve one of his teachings. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I mean, 
I mean, why, but why wouldn't he um, communicate it to us in a different way instead of a book? Because a book, books can be, they can be changed, they can be... Okay. Uh, you know, when, yeah, but we're going to come to it. Even word of mouth, when people memorize them. If you ever play Chinese whispers, you whisper in someone's ear, it goes around the whole circle. It's never the same message. That That's true. Around. That's true, Simba, but I will come to that. Now, when you... First of all, you have to agree that the creator, before we say how he's going to do it, why he communicates through the book or that, first of all, you have to accept the creator, the most wise, will not leave us without clarifying the truth to us. Do you agree with that? Okay. He must clarify the truth because why? He goes in line that he's the truth, he's the most high, he's the most wise. Now, therefore, the truth, the absolute truth must be somewhere. Is it in the Christianity, Judaism? Okay, you with me? Now, how the Creator did it? That's why, because the Creator wants to preserve his last revelation, he sent it to the people who were known to memorize hundreds of lines of poems. You have to understand the Arabs were not known to write books. The first book, the first book the Arabs had, it was the Quran. The Arab. Let me make it clear to you. God wants to show us he's the most wise. So at the time of Moses, the prophet Moses, you know prophet Moses? Yeah. During his lifetime, the people were known for magic. They were very good at magic, okay? They were experts. So God gave Moses a miracle. It was similar to magic, but not magic. When he parted the sea. The sea, also when the, the stick turned to snake. Okay? So, yes. So in people, God is not it's beyond magic. The time of Jesus, the Greeks, they were known for medicine. They were advanced for medicine. God gave a miracle to Jesus, one of them to bring dead people to life. So when people who are experts in medicine, they knew that cannot be medicine. This is beyond human capacity. Now we come to Prophet Muhammad's time, alayhi salatu salam. In his lifetime, the Arabs were known for poetry, poems. They used to challenge one another. On a spot, he will make 300 lines of poems. Yeah, it was, it was their nature. They just memorize, memorize, they memorize, they memorize their lineage. Goes back like to 17, 20, normal. They even memorize the lineage of their horses. They will know for strong memory, very strong memory. So the Quran came to people who memorize the Quran. Because if you memorize something in your heart, it cannot be changed. If you have thousands of people, for example, Ali, a, B, C. I can get a pen, I say A, O, F. It won't say no, it's A, B, C. So I can change it by writing, but what is in the heart cannot be changed, especially if there's thousands of people. So Prophet Muhammad when he was receiving the Quran, he read it out to the companions, wrote it down, and read it out to him, and memorized it. The, you see now, you can go on YouTube, there is Muslim children, memorize the Quran word for word, letter for, for letter. In our mosques, we pray, we, memorize, we recite the Quran openly. If we make a mistake, someone corrects us. That's how, we, how you see it now. It was the same before and before. The Quran was passed down to us through generations. Memorize it. Not just one person, because Chinese whisper, one person, and also Chinese whisper, the person is not thinking, I have to make sure I'm memorizing it. This beginning is just a whisper. But the Quran, the companions, they will sacrifice their life their wealth, their family, to make sure the word of God is not going to be loose. It's not going to be lost, I mean, okay? Is that clear? Make sense? Okay, that's it. So, what I would say to you, bro, I'm here to call people to worship God. And to say, look, all of us here, with our natural inclination, we should worship God. But the correct way to worship Him, according to His way. That's why He sent Prophet Muhammad. What is Islam? People, they try to make Islam, make it seem as, Arab culture, Pakistani culture, no. Islam means to submit yourself to God according to His will. Islam is to believe in one God alone, okay? And to establish the prayer, you know, and to give charity. These are five pillars of Islam and the first month of Ramadan and to Hajj. But the first thing you should focus on, uh, uh, fast, the month of Ramadan, yeah. All the obligations, brother, that Allah has legislated for us as human beings, is beneficial for our bodies and our spirits, you know? So I will ask you, if it makes sense to you and is it clear to you, I'm inviting you to accept Islam. Yes, because what I will tell you, brother, 
How many people left their houses, they never come back? How many people went to sleep, they never wake up? That's why in the Quran Allah said, وَمَا كُنَّ مُعَذِّبِينَ حَتَّى نَبْعَثَ رَسُولًا Allah will never punish people and say clarify the truth to them. If the truth is clear to you and you turn away from it, then don't blame no one except yourself. Because one of the names of God is the Adl, the most just. That's why based upon his justice, his mercy, create paradise. Based upon his anger, create the hellfire. But God is the most just. That's what Allah said in the Quran. أَفَنَجْعَلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ كَالْمُجْرِمِينَ مَا لَكُمْ كَيْفَ تَحْكُمُونَ Are we going to make equal those who believe with those who are criminals? How can you judge? So this life is like a bridge. No one build a house upon a bridge. We use a bridge to cross from one side to the other side. This is our life. It's like a bridge. So on the other side, you need something. What is it? God sent the prophets and the messengers to tell us what is it. It's piety, righteousness and good deeds. When you go inside the grave, none of this stuff will come of you. It's your actions. Prophet Muhammad, because Allah gave him the knowledge of the unseen, he said when a person dies, three things follow him into his graveyard. Your wealth, your family, and your actions. Your wealth and your family will return, your actions will be inside the grave. No way. So what, you get to see your family after you die? Of course. No, no, I'm talking about your family will return, Barakalafi. Your family will return back to their houses. Like, you know, your, uh, your brother, your sister will bury you and they will leave. You'll be inside your grave by yourself. And there's, in Islam, there's something called the life of the grave. Allah said in the Quran, Allah said, do you think we created you without any purpose? And to us, you will not return far away from Allah from this imperfection. So you are here for a purpose. It makes sense to you. I'm just inviting you to accept the truth and to accept Islam, which goes in line with your reasoning, which accepts, it makes sense, is it clear. So how to become Muslim? You don't have to fly, you don't have to swim. It's a two testimony. What is a two testimony? First part, I bear witness there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, the name of God. Which is, I should be grateful for what God has given me. The life, the air, the water, you know? Likewise, I should worship the Creator according to his prophet Muhammad. That is a true testimony. Then you learn Islam step by step. And I always mention this example. If you eat the whole cake at once, what will happen to you? You vomit. You got sick, of course. In order for you to feel the sweetness of the cake, you take it bit by bit. Likewise, Islam step by step. Step by step, brother. What do you think? You want to become Muslim? You know what, yeah, I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep coming to speakers' corner. No problem. Maybe next time I'll do it. Because right now, I'm in a position where I'm, you know, I'm smoking a lot of weed. I'm doing, I'm doing a lot of drugs and stuff. Okay. You know I, mean? I feel like I, I feel I'd be... Hypocrite. It'd be a wrong time. Okay. To, do you know what I mean? I need to get myself more biased and more... There's one thing here. I need to get a bit more okay. I'm, let me ask I'm you. Smoking you know I mean? Okay. Like, I'm, not in the, I'm not in the right head space. Okay. Let me ask you. <laughs> Firstly, are you guaranteed to live tomorrow? Uh, You're not guaranteed to live tomorrow. No, no, of course, no, you, can, you can die today, true. you know? Yeah, true. Likewise, what you said about smoking drugs and smoking other, uh, smoking drugs in general, does, when you become Muslim, doesn't mean you're perfect, you know? Because dying as a Muslim while you're smoking drugs and doing other evil things is better than dying without Islam. Because Allah said the Quran, Allah forgive anything except rejecting him and turning away from him. Rather, Islam will help you to stop. Me personally, I live that lifestyle. Me, I don't, I don't talk about my lifestyle like this. But I lived what you lived, understand? I lived that lifestyle crazy, understand? And I always, used to, I, I, I always used to say, how can I stop what I'm doing? You know? But the way I stopped, when I start practicing my religion. Even though, yes, not straight away. That's true, brother. When I stopped, I didn't stop everything at once. There was some stuff I was still doing it. Because we're not perfect, we're human beings. That's why Prophet, what you said, Prophet Muhammad told us, when a person wants to become a Muslim, the Satan will come and try to put barriers in front of him. Ah, you do evil things, you smoke, you're not ready. All of that, that is just a barriers. It's better off to go with the key. And you, because if you want to learn how to drive, you don't learn driving outside your car. You go inside the car and you learn. So it's better off to accept and step by step you learn. As for that, you stop it with the brothers here, 
you get in contact with the brothers who will help you inshallah ta'ala but accept islam and again i'm not trying to force you something no i'm just giving you options you understand because i want good for you and prophet muhammad said our messenger said if allah guide one person through you it's better than the world and what is in it you know so when i if you become muslim it's a big reward for me likewise when you become muslim all your actions all your evil, evil deeds whatever you did in the morning will be forgiven you understand so you start a new page of life however doesn't mean you should you're gonna become perfect the end of the day we are human beings but i believe if you accept the truth and it makes sense to you then you should say it testify the truth you know what i'm saying don't think too much because like, i'm not saying don't think too much like don't analyze you analyze the truth which you did and you said yeah it makes sense it makes sense i'm saying when you want to become muslim the satan always tries to bring you barriers you understand brother you can live now and you die and if you die it's over for you seriously because why you have left the main purpose for you to be here which is to accept your creator you understand and it's better off as i said you walk away with the shahada which is i bear witness i should worship my creator my god and i bear witness that muhammad is a prophet and the messenger of god based upon what the proofs i gave you prophecies the quran and everything clear yeah, yeah alhamdulillah i mean everyone's gonna be happy about it for you you understand i mean forget the people who say you know maybe i'm shy or no when you be in the grave brother it's over none of these brothers will come of you in the grave you're gonna be by yourself how do we how do we know what's going to happen when we die? I mean, it's impossible to know. But I think no, we know, we know, because why? If we establish again that what God has sent down to Prophet Muhammad is from him, logic dictates, it must be truth. Understand? That's why the Quran, it has the knowledge, information of the grave in detail. Likewise, the prophetic tradition. Likewise, the knowledge of the hereafter. You know? Of course, of course, we read the Quran. It's a powerful book. A book tells you about the reality of this life. The reality of many of us, we don't want to face. It tells you how this life is going to be. And we're going to die, what is going to happen to you? Because many of us, we want to smoke just to forget. But then how, like, no, no one, like, for example, yeah, there, was a, there was a football player, I think a, a couple of years ago, he died on a pitch and then he come back to life two minutes later or something. No, he didn't die. There's a difference between that, because when you die, when the soul leaves your body, when the heart stops, doesn't mean you die, you're dead. Okay, because the soul has to leave the body. This happened many times. So then how does anyone know what happens when he dies? As I told you, because the prophets of God, Moses, Abraham, Jesus, Jacob, all these prophets and messengers, they never met each other. They never met each other while they were preaching. But they came with the same teaching from God. Because remember the point. God is the most wise. He will not leave us without clarifying the truth. That's why he sent the prophets and messengers. And he will, he will protect the, tr the absolute truth. And which is what? The Quran. It's clear. You understand? Go on. I think that there should be messengers here now. Why is there not messengers here now? Okay. You know what I mean? There, do, do you know why? Why do we have to believe something that long ago? Okay. Why is there a guy here now that's got that, that, that God blessed with that? Okay. Ability to the message, why would I have messengers now? Because when you study history, the reasons God sent the messengers and the prophets, there's three reasons or four reasons. One of them, that messenger, was sent to specific people okay so god will send another messenger to different people that's one reason second reason that the teaching of that messenger who came before has been corrupted so god sent another messenger to correct that teaching the third reason the messenger will, god will send another messenger to support the already the messenger that he has already sent after prophet muhammad his teaching is being preserved perfectly his teaching is for everyone and likewise, if God wants to send another prophet to aid him, he would have sent it during his lifetime. So therefore, we are not in need of another prophet because the teaching is perfect. What is upon us to follow? The solution for our problems is in the Quran and the prophetic tradition. Like one of the Orientalists said, he said, if Prophet Muhammad was alive, he would have resolved our problems in a normal way, easy way. But his teaching is still the same. You know, as I've mentioned, the way Allah protected the teaching of, of the Quran and the prophetic tradition is a perfect way. So we are not in need of a prophet. What we are in need 
to follow the teaching of God he sent to us. You see, for example, if I say to you, look, do not leave your house at 10 p.m. There's people killing each other. Then you go out, you get killed. No one should say, no, we should, get, we should, we should, look, we should look for another father. Imagine, imagine the, you, sorry, the, sorry to cut you. The problem is not with me, it's a problem with the teaching that you didn't follow. No, Make no, sense? I think I asked everything. I still think it would be better if there was a prophet here now, you know what I mean? If there was a prophet here now, yeah, imagine everyone would be so happy. Everyone would be like following that guy. Do you know what I mean? Like Jesus. That is not true. Because why? The time of Jesus. There would be no arguments. No, the time of Jesus. Everyone would be following that prophet. And like, why isn't the prophet here now? Is there a prophet coming? There's a teacher's life. That's what I'm saying. Follow the teaching. It's compiled for you. Even the scholars. Yeah. What I'm saying, you say if a prophet is now, Everyone will be happy. But that's not true because some people, they like to go and guess what God said. So the, the, the problem is not bringing new prophets or not. The problem will not follow the teaching. For example, how many people they know that if you steal, you go to prison? Many people know that. But people still steal. Is a problem with the, 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 the law or the problem with the people? Problem with the people. How many people know if you pass the, uh, the traffic light, you get fined? People still do it. Is the problem with the traffic light? Yeah. Should we say, let's get a new traffic light? Or should we teach the people? What does the Quran say about like, uh, money? Because I don't, I don't think we should have money. I think we should get rid of money as a society. I mean, so but... It, at least greed, uh, narcissism, people, uh, uh, jealousy, uh, because people want for other people. That's and, true. And inequality, mainly just inequality. You know what I mean, why do, yeah. we still, why do we still have money? The Quran, well, the, Quran the, time, the time Prophet Muhammad, there was no money, of course. There was either gold or silver. Okay, that's how they used to trade. But of course now it changed. There's no problem with that. I mean, Islam teach us to take, uh, to participate in life. Making money is no problem as long you give charity to people. As long you don't be greedy. So Islam comes in and tell you, look, be good to people, uh, uh, make money, take care of yourself, but take care of the people. In Islam, we have two charity and uh, donations. Charity, which is compulsion upon Muslims. One is after the fasting of month of Ramadan. The other one which is yearly. So every rich person should, uh, should spend, should spend 2.5 from his wealth. Imagine every rich person spent 2.5 from their wealth would be happier. So the, so the teaching is there. Like, like, like the rich people, they never do that. Even the ones that, even the ones that are religious, I'm pretty sure they don't do that. No, there's they, people. They, there's good people. There's. Like, let's say, like, like, you know, in um, in like Saudi Arabia, and that there's there's a lot of oil, right? There's, there's what? There's, there's a lot of oil, right? A lot of oil, yes. So there must there's rich people, very rich people. That's correct. There's very rich people. Yeah. They do that. I don't know all of them. I don't know all of them to be honest. In case, do, yeah. but we don't judge people like that because money corrupts. Yeah? Why do we still have money? No, people still do that because I was watching a program. There was a guy from Kuwait, he was a rich man, he went to Africa, in Africa, and he was helping the people. He was a doctor, he went and he lived in Africa, amongst the Africans in a, in, in a poor area, helping the people. So there is good people. However, let's go back to the main point. Instead of focusing on the other people, let's focus on ourselves first. That's what Allah said in the Quran. Oh, you who believe, Save yourself and your family from the fire. This is a principle. Save yourself first. What should I sorry? Uh, will, yeah? Will save yourself, brother. Okay? Now let's remember. Save yourself first, then think about the other people. I'm saying if Islam makes sense to you, accept the truth, it's better off turn away from it. But again, it's up to you. Allah gave you free will, Allah gave you intellect, it's up to you what you want to do. Understand? That's why I was, I was asking you, does it make sense to you? said yes. Is it clear to you? Yes. It's true. It's true, yes. If this is the case, then accept the truth. If you want time to think, yeah, no problem. No problem. Uh, Anwar, do you have any book to give our... our, our uh, no problem. Can I give you... Any book would be good. Yes, but let me give you, let me give you a website. Is yeah, 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 let me give you a word. Do you have a phone? Um, I've got a phone now. Yeah, let me, write, let me write something for you. You didn't want to take a shot, did you? No, let him think about it. We don't want. Yeah, I need to think about it. God will help you, man. Uh, okay, I don't know my password. I was going to pay my own password. <laughs>
take it, you'll get more help in everything you have for your challenges in your life. That's true. Okay, I was here. So like, uh, title, yeah, about Islam. Okay. Okay, what is it? About you know, the go to Hajj, like back then, would they have been able to do Hajj as easily as now? Now we've got aeroplanes, right? And like people can get to. Mecca yeah, that's that's why Hajj. That's why Hajj. One of the conditions of doing Hajj, you have to be able. If you are unable, don't do Hajj. That's why Hajj al Bayti, man istata'a, okay, to, uh, uh, um, to establish Hajj if you are able. You know? So, Alhamdulillah, you can see that the Islamic obligations, like for example, now, imagine I cannot, be, I cannot pray standing. Prophet Muhammad said, if you cannot pray standing, you pray sitting. If you cannot pray sitting, you pray laying down. So Islam, it teaches you, shows you that the Islam is from the Creator, the Most High. Because it makes it easy for mankind. You know, Allah mentioned the Quran, مَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah is going to make it harder on you. Okay? So, but my, to be honest, I want to come back to the main point. Because you seem like you want to learn, that's good. But what you have to focus, brother, focus on the foundation. And I believe, based upon what you just said to me, like, you know, you accepted the uh, Allah, the like, Most High, you accepted that there, was, uh, there is a purpose for our life, Prophet Muhammad prophecies. I believe you are ready to accept Islam, bro. Yeah. I believe that. Learn after, but now I, you should accept, you should take Shahada. Yeah, I know what you mean. I don't, I don't know what you mean. You see what I'm saying? Because the reason I'm encouraging you, I'm not trying to like, put force you something, encouraging you because you are accepting the truth. Let me make it clear to you. If you love your mother with your heart, would you not say it? Yeah, I'll probably say it. Yeah. Okay. Do you love God with your heart? Uh, well, the thing is, yeah, I don't. Like, I, I couldn't say. I, I couldn't know. I don't know what God is. You know what I mean? So I couldn't define. No. Before define, we, God is the Creator, the Most High, the Most Wise. Okay. We're not talking about defining in detail. Okay. But you love God. Do you love God for what has given you? Yeah, I mean, if you're talking about something that's like, because I, I like, God is such a, it's an abstract concept. It's hard to know what God is. You know what I mean? It's like, what? No, we can, we can. I mean, we're going back to, we can because why? We can know that God is the creator, is the provider. We know that. Okay. How God look? We don't know how God look. But that doesn't mean we don't know God. We know God. That's why God described Himself through His prophets and messengers. You understand? God who gave you life, would you, not, would you not love him for giving you life? You love him. He gave you eyes, would you not love him? Yeah. So you love God. He's given me the consciousness. The consciousness. Yeah, yeah. You see what I'm saying? He gave you, look, you're able to walk. Yeah. So you love God. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So you should, the way God, you know God gave you many blessings. So why are you taking too long? Or why you want to delay your appreciation to him? Why are you saying, not now, tomorrow? If it's clear to you, why don't you say, you know what? Yes, I want to be grateful to my Creator. For a long time, I have not been grateful to Him according to His way. So let me accept the truth now and be grateful to my Creator. Well, do, you know, do you know what it is? Yeah, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of belief systems yeah, that, 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 that say that there's a God, that there's one God. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's like, there's obviously Judaism. Um, like, how do I know that Islam is the right one? That's a good question. There is, that, that's a good question. There is many religions. So how do you know God, the Islam is the correct way, okay? God gave us faculties. God gave us intellect and gave us sound reasoning and gave us our perceptions, okay? Now, Islam, that's one of the great miracles of Islam. Islam goes in line with your natural inclination. Islam tells you God is perfect. God is the most high. God does not die. Christianity says God died. And some of church is happy. Do you accept that? Yeah, that's like a baby. That's you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So God became a baby because of the sins that He created you with to kill Himself to forgive you the sins that He created you with. And Jesus is God, yeah, no, but weird, yeah. no, that's it. So put it in the through out the window. Yeah, yeah. Judaism, Judaism. The only people are saved. They are the Jews. So that God is racist. What about the other people? That's why God of Islam is a God for everyone. You know. And Judaism in the Old Testament said, God regrets, regret is imperfection. You see, so clearly you can see, we're not speaking about that. Even though, in general, we believe in the same God. 
However, we believe they lied about God. They lied about Jesus. Jesus was a mighty messenger. That's what Islam teach me. If I was alive at the time of Jesus, the only way to get to God is by following Jesus' teaching. Before Jesus was Moses. If I was alive at the time of Moses, the only way to get to God by following Moses' teaching. Now the last prophet is Muhammad. The only way to get to God by following the teaching of Prophet Muhammad. So now that's why the, the true religion is Islam because Islam goes in line with your faculties that God has given it to you prior listen, uh, you listening to Islamic teachings. You see, because that's, that's what I do all the time, bro. Well, yeah? Every time I explain Islam, I always make sure to ask, does it make sense? Is it clear? You accept this truth? When the person says yes, 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 I said, look, you accept this truth, why you are hesitate, hesitating to accept it? Accept it with your mouth, because if you accept it with, only with your heart, that will not suffice you. Allah said in the Quran, Quran Who is more unjust than the one who has been reminded with Allah's signs, and he turns away from it? Say, so, you know, I'm busy, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to pay bills. There's no one more unjust than rejecting God. That's why if you are shy because of these people here, you can go there and just me and you and say shahada. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you want to go there? No, just no, say, no, 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 no problem. I read the book. When I, when I, got, um, I was in a cell, yeah? Okay. I'm not into read. They gave me the Quran, so I read the Quran. Oh, alhamdulillah. I, I didn't read. I only read little bits of it. Okay. I, I, I don't have good focus. I, 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 I read, like, it was shown, it, talked, it, it was a bit in the beginning where okay. it said the life of Prophet Muhammad, right? And apparently, Prophet Muhammad, before he became recognized as a prophet, he was, which was when he was 40, was it? When he was 40 years old. Mm. He went to live with, he was living with the Jews for, for 20 years. No, that's not, he never lived with Jews for 20 years. He, he lived in Mecca, there was no Jews in Mecca. Oh. For 13 years, so he was 40 years when he became a prophet. And uh, uh, in Mecca, there was no Jews. There was no Jews. There was no Yehud in Mecca. The Jewish people lived in Medina. Uh, so Prophet he became a prophet when he was 53 years old because his people started torturing him, harming him. So he migrated from Mecca to Medina. That's when the Jewish lived, yeah, in Medina. So he lived with them the 10 years. However, he was telling them openly what they said about Jesus and his mother is wrong. So he never, like if Prophet Muhammad was a false prophet, he would have agreed with the Jews concerning Jesus and his mother just to gain followers. But he said, no, he said, what you are saying about Jesus and his mother is completely false. What did they say about his mom? They said, she, 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 from their claim, that she was a fornicator and that Jesus was a bastard, you know? Oh, wow. So Islam came to defend that. And that's another way to establish so she that... Uh, she was huh? not a virgin. So she, so she was a virgin. She she was a virgin. Yeah, but Islam said virgin. She was a virgin. The, uh, Muhammad says virgin, yeah. But they say, the Christians say it was not... A, uh, I mean, the Jews, they say she was a fornicator, adulterer. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, bro, I have to go, inshallah. Uh, I don't know what I'll do. You have my number, I will WhatsApp you, yeah. study, you know, I, I would be very happy for you to become Muslim now, but it's up to you again, but... He wants to think. Allah is going to give you that help. You're going to be able to deal with those things. Trust me. A lot of people do feel that, man. So yes. Seize the home. I don't know if you feel comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Based on the conversation I heard you having, you're somebody who kind of already had it. It makes sense to you already. Plus, the questions you asked, like you were very objective. It seems like it's a line you need to do, man. You should do it. It's two words, like two sentences. Just go for it, bro. Yeah, but then it's too like drunk. Yeah, good salam. Yeah, no, no, think about it. You know, always, I think about it. You know, always, I think about it. Always, I think about Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad, many of his companions, he said, when he told them about Islam, they told him, let us think of it. So, Prophet Muhammad said, think. So, we follow the teacher of Prophet Muhammad. So, you know, think. Of course, Prophet was happy for some people to become Muslim straight away. But likewise, Prophet Muhammad وسلم, some of his companions, when he told them Islam and he offered them, they said, oh, let us think about it. So we let you think. And what we tell you to do, when you go home, make sure you pray to God. He said, oh God, guide me and help me to overpower my issues, my problems. All right, brother, we'll take care of yourself. Okay, inshallah, take care of yourself, brother.